everybody, it's Carrie with Seed to Spoon. We absolutely love growing our tomatoes and we love the taste of them, but so do those pests. So today I thought I would talk about the top common pests that you will see on your tomato plants and some organic remedies on how to go about treating for them. talk about the most common pests that we see here in our garden, but if you want to see the full list of pests, check out our free app from Seed to Spoon. There's a pest section in there. So if you go to tomatoes under the, and then click pests, it'll show you all of the lists of the, of all of the most common pests that attack. And if you click on them, it'll go through all of the organic ways that we can go about treating for them too. Aphids are probably one of the most common things that you will see just in your garden in general, but they do love those tomato plants as well. The aphids are the small, tiny black things that you'll see on the leaves, but the great thing about them is they're pretty easy to handle. All you need to do is just take a hose of water and just spray them off to the ground and that'll typically do the trick. And then you can also do things like encouraging ladybugs and green lace wings into your garden. Both of those really love to eat the aphids, especially the ladybug larva, which I will pop a picture in because they look kind of weird, but man, they love to eat those aphids. So if you see any of those, let those be. And if you have a bad enough infestation, you may need to resort to some sort of insecticidal spray, but the good news is there's plenty of organic ones and Espoma actually makes a very good organic spray that we have links for within the app. So check that out if you have a really bad infestation and those other remedies aren't working for you. The next insect that I wanna talk about are leaf hoppers. And while some of these are actually very pretty, I'll pop up a picture because they are very pretty, but they can do a lot of damage to your plants. These ones can carry diseases and really affect your tomato plants. They can carry the tomato mosaic virus and that can really damage your tomato. So you wanna make sure you avoid all of those. So there's several things that you can do to help manage leaf hoppers, but the only thing that we've ever had to really do is hang these yellow sticky traps right here, and they work amazing. The leaf hoppers are naturally attracted to this and they get stuck on here. And then that's it. You don't have to use any pesticides, no nothing. It works amazing. They're super easy. We have links for these all throughout the app, so make sure you check those out. And a common thing that people are usually worried about whenever I mention these yellow sticky traps are beneficials. Well, we've been using these for quite a while now, and we've never seen a ladybug, butterfly, or anything like that that has been in any of these traps before. Now, it has caught quite a few flies, but my personal preference, I don't really care. So there's plenty of flies around, so I'm, I'm willing to uh, make that sacrifice. So like I said, there's several other remedies that we have also within the app. So make sure you check those out. If you don't have any of these handy or if you wanted to try something else out, make sure you check out the app. So this year we have grown a lot of potatoes and they are all over here. Not all of them, we even have some over there. We have a lot of potatoes growing everywhere. So we have seen a lot of potato beetles. And since potatoes and tomatoes are in the same family, potato beetles are attracted to both of them. So we have seen a lot of potato beetles also on our tomato plants too. Unfortunately, potato beetles can be quite tricky to manage organically, but luckily they're not as bad as some of the other ones also. So how we handle these potato beetles, we do a lot of hand picking and placing them into a bucket of soapy water, or we can also do things like laying down some diatomaceous earth, which can really help. And then if they are bad enough and we notice a big enough issue, we can spray some neem oil. And I will say a disclaimer too on the neem oil, if you have high temperatures anywhere above 90 degrees, do not do neem oil because it can suffocate your plants. So you wanna make sure that you stay away from that if you have really hot temperatures. 
Now spider mites are another common tomato pest that you'll see whenever it starts to get warmer. And while I say see, you may not see them because they are so tiny. They are very, very tiny. Now spider mites can be controlled by a few different ways. They can be controlled again with a neem oil if you have temperatures under 90. And then also things like ladybugs, green lace wings, they can be really beneficial to come in and eat them. And then also you can make some homemade sprays with garlic or alcohol. We've done that before and it's worked pretty well. Now for the fun one, everybody's favorite, tomato hornworms. So while these are huge, they can be super hard to spot. They blend in really well to the plant, so they can be really hard to spot sometimes. But you will be surprised at how many you can find and how fast they can destroy the foliage on your tomato plants. So you really need to be paying attention and picking them off as soon as you see them. And so that leads me to the first one. We do a lot of hand picking. So we pay the kids a quarter each for each of the tomato hornworms that they find. So we have a bounty on their heads. So whenever they find them, they're very excited. The chickens get just as excited to eat them. And then there's also a solution called BTK that is super helpful in handling any sort of caterpillar issues. So this one is naturally occurring and it won't harm anything except those caterpillars that are feasting on your tomato plants. So it will be a really good remedy for tomato hornworms. Another really unique solution that I want to mention mention is the use of predatory wasps. Now, I know when I say using wasps, people probably freak out because wasps get a really bad reputation, but these guys are actually really good to have in the garden. And if you ever see a tomato hornworm with those like white egg looking things on the top of them, those are the, that's the predatory wasp at work. So they lay in on top of them, lay their eggs, and it sounds really gross, but the eggs pretty much just eat the caterpillar from the inside out. So it naturally handles the caterpillar issue for you. And you can actually order predatory wasps or you can check out your local nursery too. The next pests that I want to mention are birds. Now, as much as I love birds, I do not love when they go through and they eat my tomatoes. So we try to do as much as we can to prevent that from happening. And one of our favorite ways of going about doing that is having a motion activated sprinkler placed somewhere around the tomatoes and or any sort of problem area that we have. And whenever that sprinkler senses motion going by, so whenever the bird flies by, it goes off. So that way it scares the bird away, hopefully, and they don't end up eating your tomatoes. We've had really good luck with having a motion activated sprinkler. Now we've also done things like stationing fake owls around. Now you need to make sure you move them around because they will catch on to your trick really quickly. So I move them every couple of days if I'm having problems. So we have the fake owls. We do things like scare tape also. You can do hanging old um, CDs around. So anything flashy, it'll kind of scare them, make them want to avoid the area. And then you can also do something like bird netting also if you're having a big enough issue. Now, another thing that I do want to quickly mention is for any of these um, insects that I have mentioned today, we do a lot of companion planting. So that can help to prevent the issue before we even have them. And if you are more interested in learning about companion planting, I made a video not too long ago about the top companion plants for tomatoes. So make sure you check that out and all of those companion plants will help with a lot of these insects we talked about today. So these are just a few of the tomato pests that we see commonly in our garden. And like I said, if there are any pests that you are dealing with that I didn't mention here today, make sure you check out our app because it'll have the full list of all the pests that you might see whenever you are gardening. Thank you so much for watching today, everybody. We'll see y'all next time. Bye.